At what age is your child mature enough to be left mm -hmm. home alone or even to leave the home alone, either to walk to school or to walk to the bus stop? Uh, as, a, as coming from a pedestrian safety st standpoint and, and sending children out to the road uh, to either walk to the bus stop or walk to school, uh, generally speaking, 10 years old is, is the age where you can start thinking, uh, start your child probably has good enough judgment to say it's safe to cross the street, um, to recognize dangerous situations and hazards. Under 10, they really need to be supervised. And uh, that, that goes for being you know, at the bus stop or, or wherever they're going. And, and, mm -hmm. uh, same thing if they're riding bicycles and things of that nature. So um, like playing in the neighborhood, um, I know that even in our neighborhood a lot of the kids just like to go on bike rides. So am I hearing you say that someone who's under 10 does not have the brain functioning judgment development level to make the right choices? outside of a parent supervision? I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say that. It's, it's yeah. really, it, it, it is kind of a judgment call okay. and, and I'm, you know, parents know their children and, and know what they're responsible for. Um, you know, talking I about, that was a little extreme. <laughs> <laughs> same thing, you know, going back to talking about car seat yeah. safety and you know, the, the state law says that a year they have to be rear facing in the car seat. The American Academy, uh, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends up to two years for rear facing oh, in, wow. in the seat. Even so, if they're over so 20 pounds. Correct. Yep. Just as long as they're in the proper seat right. for their weight. But the point is, is a lot of times law is what the minimum standard is. Okay. And, and that, you know, to say, well, this is the definite age. Okay. Um, this is the definite age where they need to be in a booster seat or a, ch right. or a child restraint system. This is the definite age that they need to be wearing a helmet or something of that okay. nature. You know, it's, it's, a, it's against the law for a child uh, 16, under, under the age of 16 to not wear a helmet on a, on a bicycle or a scooter or something really? like that when they're riding. Um, yeah, it's, and it's the parent that gets the ticket. Sorry. <laughs> but there again, you, you, you know, just because your child hits 16 doesn't mean they're, not, they're no longer in danger of right. a brain injury should right. they be struck by a vehicle or something like that. You want to encourage everybody to always wear a helmet. And, and that goes for the, the parents too, leading by example. Mm -hmm. um, if you're not going to wear a helmet, how are you going to be able to tell your child that they need to wear a helmet That's and a show that point. it's important? Same mm -hmm. with your seatbelt in your car. Always need to lead by example. Wow. So, I mean, that makes sense because you could have an eight-year-old that's extremely responsible or you, you know, a seven-year-old, you know, that really shows a pattern of making right choices or you can have a 12-year-old that doesn't have any sense at all. So <laughs> That's, that's you know. correct. Okay. Um, so there, there are some, uh, if you want to call it industry standards as far yep. as what's acceptable and, and they say 10 years old for um, to be walking on the roadway mm -hmm. or crossing the street or things like that right. without, being, without being supervised. Yeah, so it's, it sounds like what I'm actually hearing you say is that we need to be students of our children, that we really need to study them and spend time watching them and say, can they handle this? And then making the proper judgment calls based on that information. Absolutely, whenever possible. Yeah. And, and, and I know that life takes over and reality yeah. um, sets in and, 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 and we can't always be there every second. Of course we are on the, when, when they're younger, but as they start to get more independent and can do things on their own, um, even inside the home when you're in the home with mm -hmm. them, there can be places in the house that they're, they're playing and they're, they're right. somewhat unsupervised. And there's a lot to consider there. Uh, as, as far as things they can get into and right. um, d you know, do you have any kind of weapons in your home, prescription medication, things of that nature. Yeah. At, at some point it's realistic that you're not going to have eyes on your children. Right. That's when you need to make sure that you're doing everything you can on the preventative side again to limit their ability to access things that can be harmful mm -hmm. to them. And then uh, when they get even older and begin to venture out of the home without supervision, right. being able to recognize uh, who they're playing with and where mm -hmm. they're going and what they're doing and recognize abnormal behavior and things so that that can clue you in to start looking closer. Great. Thank you for all your input there. We're going to actually take a little break. And then when we come back, we're going to continue to talk about the older child safety. Um, stay with us because we'll be right back. Thank you. Welcome back everyone to The Single Parent. We're here with Officer Tyrell and we are talking about safety and we were just um, getting into safety with older kids mm -hmm. um, and we talked about, started talking about like safe age to go on a walk by yourself. Now would that be the same age? You said it, probably about 10 but really it depends on the maturity of the child. You really have to look at it, the child as an individual. Would that same age group apply for when they can be left at home alone, or what else can we consider there? To be left home alone, uh, 13 becomes the, the more of the, if you talk to the experts, what's, what's the acceptable age. 
uh, responsible enough to be able to care for themselves, right. to uh, recognize a dangerous situation, some emergency help, those types of things. Mm -hmm. Of course, there's always stories of the, you know, the three-year-old that knew how to dial 911 or something like that. And those, those are wonderful stories, but, um, and it can happen, but really, uh, you know, it, it, it's when they get to be about 12, 13 years old, when they are old enough to, to make the right choices and, and, and recognize, danger, not put themselves in harm's way and mm. be responsible enough to, to be home alone. Right, one thing I was considering while you were speaking is, um, now, I can, how do you know if, if you're a parent and your world is just your kids, how can you know that your 13 year old or your 10 year old for whatever you're considering letting them do is in fact responsible enough? Um, is there a, um, a stereotype or a, um, a picture, um, a developmental picture that we can read about that we can, do you know what I'm it, trying it, to ask? I, mm -hmm. I, I do, and, it's, and, and we get asked that question a lot, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what is acceptable and, and what's permissible and things. Right. Um, you know, of course, it's de the Department of Social Services is the ones that, you know, take and investigate those types of uh, issues and whether or not mm -hmm. uh, there's a uh, possibility of neglect or something that's going on in the household. But uh, there, you can't, it's, it's so different. It's so wide ranging from different mm -hmm. socioeconomical makeup, the, the neighborhood you live in, how much um, support do you have from, from neighbors, how, how free are your, your children to, to, to run to one of them if they need something or something of that nature. You know, are, are you further out in more of a rural area where they can't, it's just too, there's too many different variables that right. come into play. To, to make any kind of general statement about, mm -hmm. you know, a, absolutely at this age. And, and developmentally, children, de you know, are, are right. all different. So it really just, you know, I, I hate that we're not getting a, an equation answer here, I, I have to say, because it's really difficult as a parent to, to have that vagueness because mm -hmm. um, you want to make the right choice. Um, it, it is frustrating, but I think, I think you know, it's going to take, and, and I really believe that this is where God comes into the picture a little bit too, especially for the person who has faith is, is trusting your, you know, knowing what's safe, um, and hearing you, but then, you know, using the tool of prayer and, um, and being led by the spirit on it. And I, I'm talking to the, the, you know, Christians here, but, you know, really trusting being led by the spirit. Cause that's the only way I can get peace sometimes in these situations. Mm -hmm. There's a little detour there, but no, it didn't be said. <laughs> a lot of trust and, yeah. uh, and, and understanding and soul searching and things yeah. like that that go on throughout the entire parenting process, Yeah, as we all know. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what about um, older children watching younger kids? What about that? You want to make sure that there is a, again, I, I can't give you a hard, fast, right. you know, at this, at this age, this is going to mm -hmm. happen. But consider, is there enough of an age gap between the children that the younger children will see the older child as a, mm -hmm. as a person of authority? And uh, right. so that's also becomes uh, something to consider. So sibling dynamics. Exactly. Not just responsibility. Exactly. Because if you are going to say that this older child is in charge of the younger child, the younger mm -hmm. child needs to see that older one as that authoritative figure. Right. Yeah, I'm not doing that. You're not my mama. Yeah. <laughs> Basically. Okay. Um, so what age should we start talking to our kids about um, violence or drugs, the major things, the major problems that happen when they're home alone? What role, when do we need to start talking mm -hmm. about that? Um, a lot of times you want to go back to talking about being at home alone, but also okay. what they're going to be exposed to. We can pretty much regulate what our children are exposed right. to until they leave us and go to school. Right. And then that's when, that's when they're out of our hands and there's that exposure. That's when they come home and they mm -hmm. say things and you're like, where did you hear that from? Oh, and, yeah. and, uh, you know, or where did you get that? Or those types of things. It's more than likely is going to happen in the school setting in, in most cases. And uh, so elementary just school, <laughs> <laughs> again, you know, yeah. what's realistic, right, and, you exactly. know, and <laughs> speaking about most people and, and homeschooling situations are great. But um, w when we're talking I was just about joking, by the way, I don't expect that <laughs> <laughs> when you're talking about the elementary school uh, age the, from going from elementary school to middle school. That's when the world really changes for children. Okay. That's when the exposure of, uh, of, of drugs, violence, sex, those kinds of things really come. That, that there's mm -hmm. Children are so much more innocent in elementary school than they are in middle school. And it's because the, you know, the, sixth, seventh, the, the, the sixth grader that just came out of elementary school is so naive 
and so impressionable to that eighth grader that um, is hanging out with some high school